Hey everybody, it's Matt coming to you from Picnic Point Kayak Fishing. Welcome back. It's been a bit since I did a new video. Sorry about that. Today I'm going to go through some of the upgrades and modifications that I've made to the Pelican Kayak since I bought it and give you the lowdown on how it's functioning. I've tried to make it sort of a do-all boat. Functional for saltwater and freshwater and none of the modifications with the exception of the installation of the power system and the rear Scotty mount are permanent. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you're really into the channel. Also, you can ring the bell notification icon if you'd like to be notified when I post a new video. Alrighty, thanks. Everybody, welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to do a six month review, review, review <laughs> of the Pelican Catch 130 High Drive 2. And the last time I talked about the boat itself was when I first got it and it was just first impressions and to show off the, the, the look and the features of the boat and then I talked about its performance on water later on in the sound briefly. I have done a bunch of upgrades to it. I have used it much more vigorously. I've even broken it and um, now I'm gonna talk about my impression after six months of using it. So to begin with we'll get to the parts that broke. Well the part that broke. I have used this pedal drive in both salt water and fresh water and it's not that it broke because it still works but the design is based on the first generation Hobie Mirage Drive. And the Hobie has this big pin and a smaller pin and the plastic in the Hobie is clearly more resilient than the, than the Pelican version because these lower pins that are plastic both snapped off. And it's still fully functional, still fully usable. I still use this drive even though I emailed Pelican and they sent me out a brand new drive that is in perfect working condition. Has the pins, the lower pins, but it's identical to that drive. So I'm fairly certain that these pins will break off too. But as I understand it, we is very quick about sending sending you a new drive if your if your current drive breaks, no matter how many you've broken because I've heard stories of people having half a dozen of these drives sent under warranty. So I've decided to continue using the broken one because as I said before, it still works. The only, the only difference between the not broken one and the, and the broken one is this wobble. The pedals wiggle a little bit now because those pins aren't stabilizing the bottom of the drive. So I, I figure I'll hold on to this one so that I have a, a spare in case this one fails catastrophically. As far as stability, again, as you've seen in my videos, I've tested the stability of this boat. I've leaned way over in this boat with the new risers and without the new risers and the boat doesn't capsize. Like I said, I believe I said it in the video, the boat, I would fall out of the boat, I think, before the boat would actually flip over. Even pulling crab pots, I was pleasantly surprised that the stability of this boat holds up well against pulling a heavy weight up from the bottom of the ocean on one side of the boat. A crab pot that's full of crabs is probably 25 pounds, maybe more, depends on how big the crabs are, how much weight you've got in the crab pot. And the boat didn't even really notice. It leaned over a bit. I noticed it leaned, but there was never a point at which I thought I should maybe lean the other way to to balance the boat out. It held up perfectly. I feel like after the experience of pulling crab pots, there's probably no concern on my part about the stability of this boat in reasonable waters. Granted, I've never had any big fish or any kind of serious adversity on the water, so I can't say for absolutely certain, but I feel very comfortable in this boat. I stand up in this boat. Not that I'm a stand-up fisherman, but it does very well when you're standing in it. I went ahead and made some modifications. 
I added all of the optional hatches that didn't come with the boat, so there's now a new eight inch hatch here in the back. I guess it's an eight inch hole, six inch hatch, and a four inch hatch at the front, all of which have the bags that go in them. I don't use the bag in this middle one because I've also added a battery back here and lighting, which I'll fire up right now. And I simply just added the LED lights from Amazon. <laughs> just the stick in LED lights from Amazon. They pop in there and as long as they're not the color change versions that have a circuit in them, because that circuit incurs salt water and fries them immediately. So you get the simple ones that don't have a circuit, they're just white. And you stick them in your boat and they make great work lights. Um, I've also added Railblazer camera booms and a Scotty mount with the extension uh, arm to make, make it taller so that I can troll with my rod across the boat this way and still use the pedal drive. I've added the Garmin Striker 4 CV fish finder, which worked great in both freshwater and saltwater, but it works awesome. I got an additional Scotty mount rail that came with that fish finder that I mounted in the back over here. that now holds my rear Railblazer camera mount. I've gone ahead and added and purchased the cart that you've seen in my, some of my other videos. This cart is great. Watch the other video. Maybe I'll add the little links to them in the video somewhere in the, <laughs> in the frame. The cart's been good, especially with the, with the kayak full of stuff. It's not possible to carry it. And I also added a safety light for night running in, uh, in the salt water, or oh, in the fresh water too, so that it's visible at night. Boats that are not powered don't require a red green light at the front, so I didn't end up putting the red green light on the front. This is all that's required for running in the dark, plus the work lights makes it pretty visible. I also made a flag. I actually sewed this flag myself from an old safety vest that I had, and it's got the reflector. You might be able to see the reflection from the light in the camera. This light pole, this is an Atwood light that I, add, that I extended. It, the stock light is 24 inches tall. It's only about this tall. And because of the fact that I get out on the salt water and I would like my flagpole to be visible and my light to be high enough up that it can be seen if I get into any kind of swell, I extended this thing out to five feet tall, four, four and a half or five feet tall. If you'd like to see a video about that, smash like or make a comment and let, let me know that that's it, something that you're interested in because it was a really simple operation to modify this to fit in my Scotty track and to hold the, the, the stock Atwood uh, pole section. This is from here up. It's all 100% the original stuff out of the Atwood light setup. So yeah, smash that like button if you want to see that. The boat is big enough in the back that it fits a full, well I wouldn't say full size, but it's a regular size cooler. It's a, I don't know, 40 can cooler. It holds my crab and my uh, whatever catch I may have. The whole reason that I bought this boat was for salmon fishing and crabbing, and it has worked amazingly for that. I am able to put two crab pots on the bow of the boat, as you will see in later videos of crabbing. I bungee them down, which is, oh yeah, I took the orange bungee boingy thing out of the front of this so that I could use it for, use these loops for bungee cords. So the, the crab pots sit right here works really well. It's not so high that I can't see over it. And with, uh, with them being crab pots, I can see mostly through them too anyway. Built the seat risers. These seat risers are four and a half inches tall. They work great. A lot of guys are building ones that are six inches tall. 
I find that with the little amount that I do standing up, this is perfectly good. But with the higher seat, it's easier to stand up and sit down because you're not so squatted down to the floor. Your pedaling position's a little higher, so it makes pedaling the, the drive a little easier. I've been using this crate. I don't have a lid for it yet made, but I, ha I plan on making your standard fishing crate with the lid and bungees and all that, but I haven't done it yet and it hasn't been a problem. And it just rides right back here like that. If I ever capsize this boat, I'm gonna be a sad panda if this isn't tied down, so I'll have to figure out a way to tie it into the boat, which shouldn't be too difficult. I've upgraded my life vest from my old life vest, which was just a simple paddling vest with very little storage, well, very no storage, except for this one little loop right here that I'm not sure what it was for, but I was using it for my, my NRS knife. I've upgraded from that to an Onyx fishing kayak vest, which now holds my marine radio, my NRS knife, a whistle, I have room for my phone and whatever else I may need in here. I actually haven't even looked in all these pockets yet because I literally just got this life jacket like yesterday. But that's real handy to have all that extra space. I can already, I already know because I'm frustrated with that other vest not having all that stuff. The seat, as always, is the fold down seat. I've got my transducer mounted through the scupper hole like I showed you in the in a previous video. All in all, it's been a fantastic boat, totally worth the price. The wor especially considering that it's half the price of a Hobie or an Old Town. It's also lighter than a Hobie or an Old Town. I can lift this boat onto my car. Granted, I've put a couple of dents and a couple of scratches in my car, lifting it onto my car, but it is possible. And a very kind friend of mine actually gave me a tool, tooly rack that has a wheel on the back that slides forward and back so I can actually wheel this boat up to the back of my car, lift it on there, and roll it up onto the back of my car, which is fantastic. So special thanks to him. It holds all of my fishing rods. I have two rods here. These are both of my my saltwater spinning setups. It holds this full size crazy net that I have that I bought for salmon fishing and have yet to use for anything because it's for salmon fishing. <laughs> Got a little pocket here that I keep my crab gauge in. Again, all in all, it's been great. My Biggest concerns have been the pedal drive, which still works, as I said before, and the rudder, which as also, as I've said before, isn't as snappy as I'd like it to be, as it um, seems, to, seems to work itself loose as far as the cable mountings go. So maybe I haven't torqued the screws up enough, but I'm a little concerned about that regarding the fact that the thing is entirely made of plastic. So I try to be real careful with screws and tightening screws, but it works, it steers. I always have my angler paddle with me to, uh, which didn't come with the, the boat, by the way, I had to buy that separately, which is a cool paddle. It's like eight feet long and it has a scale on it for measuring fish so that I don't have to carry a bump board with me. Granted, it's not legal for competition fishing if you have to measure a fish that's, you know, it's critical regulation measurements. You want a bump board, but in my case, that allows me to measure whatever I need to measure to make sure that when I decide I want to keep a fish, that it's within the the slot limit or above the minimum size. That's about it for the for the details of the boat. It's been a great boat. I don't regret purchasing it one bit. I plan to keep keep paddling it. I recommend these boats to everybody that I know that doesn't have one that's thinking about getting into one, but is a bit cringy about the price of the, the high-end boats. Again, this boat is a Canadian brand made in Canada with the Ramex technology. It's a, it's a two-piece hull 
but they use some sort of exterior coating and a different type of welding system to bind it together and it has held up quite well. I clamp it down on my car with ratchet straps and you can physically see it compress a little bit when I tighten it up, but it hasn't sprung a leak or cracked. It hasn't done any kind of strange stuff. It works beautifully. Still in the same shape it was when I started using it. In the very first video that I shot, I pointed out the drain plug in the back of the boat and said that there was some complaints about people not liking the location of it. But in my experience, being both on the sound and in lakes, in rain and in chop and on beautiful sunny days, I've gotten very little water inside of this boat. And with the added access hatches, I just open them up. When I park it in my garage, I just open up those hatches and let the air flow through and it dries out and I've not had any trouble with water in the hull and I've never had to pull that plug out to to drain water out of it. So I don't think that the location of the of the drain plug in the upper part of the hull is an issue. Maybe if I somehow submerge this thing or get enough water, get it in enough water or roll it over that water actually gets in there it may become an issue, but I still don't think that there's ever gonna be enough water in there that I'm gonna actually need to use that drain plug. Well, that's about it for this, for this little review. I hope that it was informative. If there's any modifications and upgrades that you'd like to ask about or see, post it in the comments, and I will do my best to at least answer the questions. And if it's something particularly interesting, maybe we'll add it to the boat. As far as next upgrades go, I'm toying with the idea of changing out the rudder to a metal rudder so that it's longer and straight and truly straight. The next plan is to put a anchor track on here, anchor, anchor track, anchor line, anchor rope. <laughs> but I want to do, what I want to do is I want to actually remove these riveted handles so that I can reattach them with stainless steel screws and then add a bracket that comes down and allows me to put that anchor trail, anchor trolley, that's the word I'm looking for. Put that anchor trolley down low on the bottom here rather than just tying it to here or drilling holes in the boat, which I, I don't want to do. Then I'll be able to run a bracket here and run a bracket in the back that the anchor trolley will then connect to and I'll have my anchor trolley set down here exactly where I want it to be. Otherwise, it functions well as it is. I have no complaints other than the pins on the drive, but again, Pelican came through and under warranty and took care of the problem, so that's really not much of a complaint either. Hopefully they'll come out with an HD3 that's even better, which I would pony up for. Otherwise, that's about all there is to it. Well, that's it. The whole boat in not so much a nutshell. I appreciate you watching. Keep fishing and stay safe.